Carver tries to knock off three-time defending 4A champion Carr at Joe Brown Park. Plus, would Covington or Destrehan move on in Class 5A? And a Catholic League rematch as Rummel hosts St. Augustine. That and much more tonight on 4th Down Friday. From Channel 4, this is 4th Down Friday, presented by your Southern Quality Ford dealers. We start with the Catholic League rematch in the Division I quarterfinals. Six seed Jesuit and three seed Curtis at Haas Memphis. The Patriots beat the Blue Jays in mid-October, but Jesuit fires the first shots. Grant Jordan to Luke LaForge on the rollout. Blue Jays with an early 7-0 lead. Jesuit head coach Mark Sanji said the key to an upset to was, limit, was to limit Curtis's big plays. Easier said than done. That was Corey Wren scoring to tie it up at seven. Still in the first, the Veer attack goes to the air. Calling Guggenheim, this one out to Javon Studemeyer. Davis, 56-yard strike. Curtis jumps in front, 14-7. Blue Jays kept it interesting. Curtis wins by just seven tonight, 34 to 27, your final. The second week of postseason play in the metro area. What up? Welcome to Fourth Down Friday. I'm Ricardo Lacombe. When the playoff brackets initially come out, it's always a fun exercise to project potential matchups in each round, especially if two rivals can square off. Well, we got one, we got one such matchup in the 4A bracket tonight as two city schools in Carr and Carver renew acquaintances. Andrew Doak, watch this one go down at Joe Brown Park in New Orleans East, and he joins us live with more. Hey, Andrew. Yeah. Hey, Ricardo, and look, if you're Edna Carr going for your fourth straight state championship at the 4A level, at this point, you're not rebuilding, you're just reloading. Now, there are about 11 players from last year's state championship team that are still a part of this squad, and while Carr head coach Bryce Brown was quick to bat that statistic away, he was very quick after this game to point to the leadership of his senior quarterback, Leonard Kelly. Carver meeting in the second round of the 4A state playoffs. The last time these two teams met in the postseason back in 2017, it was an instant classic, but Carr trying to make sure that was not the case tonight. Given a short field early, number one, Kevin Marini, their running back, scoots for 24 yards and a score, making it 7 0 Carr. Ensuing drive, Carr scoping a score again, and this Leonard Kelly bomb resulting in a 55 yard hookup for six to Dustin Pazon, 14 zip Carr after the PAT and Pazon's mismatch became a problem for Carver. Here climbing the ladder for six more, the Rams simply had no one who could cover him one-on-one. -on -one. It was 20 not a call. Hey, bro, man. Now just before the half, Carver would not be shut out. They would score to make it 20 to six at halftime and first drive of the second half, Carver making it a game. A Quincy Curry flick of the wrist to number 13, Deloitte Lewis, making it an eight point game. But after another car answer, the Cougs were looking to put this one away. Kelly on a stop and go to number nine, Daryl Hills. And they would go on to run away with this win, 48 to 13. Carr moving on. The big plays in the second half really set the tone. You know, even though they came out on fire in the second half and answered, you know, it was our ability to keep the ball moving on third down that kept us on the field to really set the tone of the second half. Fast tempo, that's all we're doing, fast tempo to get them tied and keep the ball moving. That's what we did. You know, the great game plan this week. They're a good team. They came out to play. And, you know, the team that executes the more, the best team wins. So Carr is moving on. Bro Bridge defeated Bell Chase tonight, so they will face Carr in the next round of the playoffs. That wraps up our coverage here from Joe Brown Park. Andrew Doak, Eyewitness Sports. All right, good stuff, Andrew. Thank you very much. All right, let's check out the 5A bracket on the North Shore. 19th seed Mandeville hosting third seed Alexandria. Not the best start for the Skippers. Already down 3-0 in the first, punting away to the Trojans. That snap goes over the punter's head through the back of the end zone. So it's 5-0 Alexandria after that two-run homer. Second quarter, Mandeville trying to execute a trick play. The Trojans not fooled. Jadarius Clark intercepts it for Alexandria. The Skippers trail 12 0 into the third quarter, but Mandeville comes all the way back to take the lead and hang on tonight. 13 12. Next up for the Skippers, Houghton in the 5 8 quarters. Covington is rolling at the right time. The Lions started the year 1 3 but have gone six and one since, picking up a third straight win after upsetting 10th seed Sam Houston in the first round of the 5A playoffs last Friday. Covington returns to Jack Salter Stadium tonight, welcoming in a staple in the state playoffs 
in Destrehan. The seventh seed Wildcats also on a roll, winners of five straight after they knocked off Ponchatrula in round one. But they trailed by a touchdown going in the fourth. 7 3 now, lines with the Rock, but running back Cade Rogers puts it on the turf. Destrehan's Eric Jones recovers the fumble. A costly turnover for Covington. Alabama commit Kyle Edwards gets going. The Wildcat running back right up the middle and touch 15-yard touchdown. Wildcats take their first lead of the game, 10-7. On the ensuing kickoff, Covington trying to make a play here, but they're going to end up coughing it up again. Another fumble, Jaden Harding for Destrehan is going to recover this. Another big turnover, and the Wildcats would cash in. Edwards bangs it in from three yards out. His second rushing score, 36 carries, a buck 75 for Edwards as Destran goes up 10, and that seals the fourth quarter comeback for Destran. Wildcats are moving on to 5A quarter, 17-7. They'll host West Monroe next week. Coming up, we'll head to Joe Yenny, where Rummel puts his unbeaten record on the line against Catholic League rivals St. Aug. But first, some scores from across the state.